Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will explore whether a calorie surplus is required to grow muscle mass. First, let's quickly cover the basic concept of energy balance. Essentially, we expend a certain amount of energy each day. The amount of energy each individual expends per day will vary based on body weight, body composition, lifestyle, physical activity, and individual genetic makeup. Energy is used for all bodily functions to survive, including breathing, blood circulation, organ function, human movement, and any other function you can think of. We get this energy from the food we eat, which is known as energy intake. We quantify energy using calories, which is essentially just a unit of energy, and this allows us to make energy intake and expenditure somewhat measurable. The concept of energy balance is simply the total amount of energy we intake versus energy expended. There are three primary energy balance statuses that we can be in at any given point in time. Let's now cover what these are. First is a calorie deficit. This is when we eat fewer calories than we expend throughout the day. A consistent calorie deficit results in weight loss over time, and the magnitude of the deficit will determine the rate of weight loss. In other words, a larger deficit results in faster weight loss, and a more conservative deficit results in slower weight loss. The second state is maintenance calories. This is when we eat the same amount of calories than we expend throughout the day. Maintenance calorie intake will result in a maintenance of body weight over time, since the energy we intake is equal to the energy we expend. And lastly, we have a calorie surplus. This is when we eat more calories than we expend throughout the day. A consistent calorie surplus will result in weight gain over time. And once again, the magnitude of the surplus will determine the rate of weight gain over time. In other words, a larger surplus will result in faster weight gain, and a more conservative surplus will result in a slower rate of weight gain. Now that we understand the concept of energy balance, the question becomes, do you need to be in a surplus to build muscle? It is commonly advised that a calorie surplus is required for muscle growth to occur, and that muscle growth cannot be achieved whilst in a calorie deficit. However, is this actually a true phenomenon? To answer this question, we first need to look at the role of training versus nutrition for muscle growth. Essentially, training is the stimulus for muscle growth to occur. Like any other adaptation, hypertrophy occurs as a result of stress. If we don't stress the muscles through exercise, there is no reason for the body to adapt. We are constantly searching for better ways to train to maximize the hypertrophic stimulus, but for now we just need to understand that training is the stimulus for muscle growth. Nutrition, on the other hand, plays more of an assistance role. Nutrition alone cannot provide a hypertrophic stimulus. Rather, it can assist the hypertrophic stimulus induced from resistance training. So we still want to try and manipulate nutrition to maximize muscle growth, but ultimately it is not the stimulus, it simply assists hypertrophy adaptations. So the reality is that the training stimulus is more important than our nutritional protocols for building muscle. This is because without a good training stimulus, we don't have any reason to adapt in the first place. Now that we understand the roles of training and nutrition for muscle growth, let's now explore what effect energy balance may have on muscle hypertrophy. First, let's explore the phenomenon of body recomposition. Recomposition is when we see muscle growth and fat loss occur at the same time. In other words, this is when we see muscle growth occurring during a calorie deficit or at maintenance calories. This is often visible in novice trainees or when lifters get back into training after extended time off. However, it is often stated that this doesn't occur in well-trained lifters. This research review analyzed the current evidence on the prevalence of body recomposition occurring. The researchers concluded that body recomposition can in fact occur even in well-trained lifters. So this pretty much answers our primary question. Muscle growth can be achieved without a calorie surplus. However, we now need to establish how a calorie surplus compares to maintenance calories or a deficit. Is a surplus more effective than maintenance or a deficit, or are they equally as effective? There is surprisingly very limited data directly comparing the effects of energy balance during a resistance training program on body composition outcomes. Rather, we have to compare different studies to find the answer. First, let's look at this study comparing the effects of a faster versus a slower rate of weight loss on body composition of elite athletes. 
The athletes were assigned diets, which provide either a 0.7% of body weight loss per week for 10 to 12 weeks, or a 1.4% body weight loss per week for 4 to 6 weeks. Athletes continued with their regular sport practice and resistance training routines during the dieting period. It was found that both groups lost the same total amount of weight, although the proportion of muscle and fat loss was different. As we can see here, the slower weight loss group actually saw a slight increase in lean mass and a large reduction in fat mass. While the faster weight loss group saw a slight decrease in lean mass and less reduction in fat mass. So as we can see, an aggressive calorie deficit can potentially result in some slight muscle loss in advanced trainees. Let's also have a look at a similar study comparing the effects of a fast versus a slow rate of weight gain on body composition outcomes. One group was assigned to an individualized calorie surplus aimed at promoting muscle growth, while another group simply ate ad libitum, which basically means they ate as they desired with no specific rules. Again, these were elite athletes who continued their regular sport practice and resistance training routines throughout the study. It was found that the group eating in an intentional surplus gained more total body weight, and most of this was gains in fat mass. The faster rate of weight gain did result in slightly more muscle growth than the slower rate, but also around five times more body fat too. So from these two studies, we can probably conclude that a calorie surplus is generally more effective for muscle growth compared with maintenance or a deficit. A surplus of any magnitude will probably result in muscle growth, while a deficit could potentially result in muscle loss if it is too aggressive. So now we can be quite confident in saying that a calorie surplus is not mandatory for muscle growth, although it is probably overall more effective than maintenance or a deficit. However, there are many other factors which also influence muscle growth too, and will influence the hypertrophy response with either form of energy balance. Let's now cover what these are and how they may influence muscle growth. The first and most important is the training stimulus. Our resistance training protocols will be the most influential factor determining the hypertrophy response, even more so than energy balance. The training stimulus will be based on many factors, such as training volume, proximity to failure, lifting technique, and more. We are constantly trying to find better and better ways to make the training stimulus more effective to maximize the hypertrophic response. Ultimately, a better training stimulus will result in a higher likelihood or rate of muscle growth, while a poorer stimulus will decrease the likelihood or rate of growth. The second consideration independent of calorie balance is protein intake. The total amount of protein we consume per day relative to our body weight has been shown to influence muscular adaptations. It is well established that a higher daily protein intake has beneficial effects on muscle growth in both surplus and a deficit. This meta-analysis analyzed the current evidence on the effects of protein intake on muscle hypertrophy. The authors suggested that protein intakes around 1.5 to 2 grams per kilogram per day had an almost linear positive relationship between total daily intake and muscle growth. However, beyond this range, additional protein intake seemed to have small additional benefits, but with diminishing returns. In simple terms, more protein appears to be favorable for muscle growth, but beyond approximately 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram per day has little additional benefit relative to the amount increased. Therefore, whether trainees are in a surplus, deficit, or at maintenance calories, higher daily protein intakes are probably going to increase the likelihood or rate of muscle growth. On the other hand, a lower protein intake will reduce the likelihood and rate of hypertrophy. Next is training experience. As we generally observe, most lifters can make their fastest rate of muscle growth in the initial months of resistance training. As we become more and more advanced, our rate of muscle growth tends to decline. This doesn't mean we can't make gains as an advanced lifter, it just takes longer compared to our initial stages of our lifting careers. Because novice trainees are unaccustomed to resistance training, they are likely to make progress doing almost anything as long as they lift in some capacity. This means whether a novice is in a surplus, deficit, or at maintenance, they will probably still see significant progress over time. Therefore, a more novice lifter will have a higher likelihood or rate of muscle growth independent of energy balance, whereas a more advanced lifter will have a reduced likelihood or rate of muscle growth. And the last potential factor to consider independent of energy balance is current body fat levels. When trainees are very lean, which would be around 10% body fat or lower for males and around 18% or lower for females, 
our ability to gain muscle is probably slightly inhibited. However, if we are in a relatively healthy body fat range, around 10-20% to for males and around 18-30% to for females, our ability to build muscle is probably slightly better. It is not entirely clear why this is the case, but it may be due to factors such as unfavorable hormonal changes. This can be seen in this case study, which explored the physiological effects of going through a bodybuilding contest preparation, which had the athlete diet down to around 5% body fat. In addition to the reductions in body fat, the athlete also lost some lean mass. This may be due to a variety of factors, including hormonal changes. As we can see, testosterone drops significantly during the contest period before increasing back to baseline levels as body weight increased after the contest prep. So whether we are in a calorie surplus or calorie deficit, there are many other factors which will increase our likelihood of growing muscle. This can be thought of on a spectrum of likelihood. Trainees who are most likely to grow muscle or see a faster rate of muscle growth are those who are in a calorie surplus, have an effective training routine, a high daily protein intake, a low training age, and a moderate to high level of body fat. On the other side of the spectrum, trainees who are least likely to experience muscle growth or a slower rate of growth are those who don't have a solid training routine in place, have a lower protein intake, have a high level of training experience, and have a low body fat. These lifters can still grow muscle, but it is less likely, and if it does occur, it will be at a slower rate. So let's summarize the effects of energy balance on muscle growth. Firstly, we need to understand that training is the stimulus for muscle growth, while nutrition simply plays an assistive role. Therefore, muscle growth can occur during a calorie deficit or at maintenance calories, and a surplus is not mandatory for hypertrophy adaptations. However, a surplus is probably necessary to maximize the rate of muscle growth over a given period of time. If trainees do want to eat in a surplus, then a slower rate of weight gain is probably more favorable compared with a faster rate of gain. This is to avoid unnecessary fat gain without any significant compromise in muscle growth. While energy balance is one factor determining the hypertrophy response, there are also other independent factors which will have a pronounced effect on muscle growth too. The training protocol, protein intake, training experience, and current body fat will all influence how likely we are to gain muscle, regardless of energy balance. Therefore, the decision to bulk, cut, or maintain is ultimately something that needs to be individualized based on context. Trainees can use this information to determine what energy balance they want to consume and how this may affect muscle growth. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.